Hey there YouTube, I just thought I'd um, show you what I've been doing with this uh, LTC 3780. I have put it into a little project box, as you can see. Um, I have put some, I have taken out the pots that were actually on the board. Uh, those square multi-turn pots. Unfortunately, I don't have any 500k multi-turn pots or a 200k multi-turn pot. All I had was two 500k single turns and a 250k um, single turn. But I will be swapping out the 250k with a 200k when it comes in. Um, yeah, I put a little voltage and amp meter on there it's not the one i'm going to use but because i can't find the wires for the one i'm going to use i've just put this in for now it's the same size as one of these but it does have different battery it does have different power connections so i can't just interchange it but this is the um, higher resolution i ended up chucking in a big old heat sink into this one because well it would make it very light and sort of like yeah you know, just it didn't feel very nice with it with just this inside there and giving it more heat sink well can't really hurt it can it so and I use some thermal paste now it's got a heat sink on the back of this it's got the aluminium heat sink on the back of this but it's got two screws that go through and they sort of protrude out the other side. So in order for me to give a nice flat connection on this surface, I've had to put it on in such a way that it's that the screws are just sat over the edge um, of the heatsink, and then I put some thermal paste in between it and used a load of capacitor gunk, you know, this um, this stuff that they put around capacitors on in circuit boards, because that all holds it down nice. I've used the same white plastic gunk. Maybe you can see that just underneath here. Uh, down the edge to hold this in and it is all held really nice I'd give it a good old shake around uh, but I've got all this stuff wires and stuff attached and so I don't really want to do that um, I'll put a fan on the back to pull air away from here which is quite good I'll put a couple of diodes on the output one because it says you want a diode anyway if you're going to be charging batteries um, and I just put a couple of 6 amp diodes there uh, to pull down the voltage as well I don't need I don't you know I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll be fine with 26 and a half volts um, um, I couldn't my, for some reason my switch doesn't work it seems to be in a closed position no matter where I put it so I need to take that out and put a switch and at the minute I've just had to stick the green and black wire together so the power would come on of course um, and this uh, this wire here is for the LED, the green LED. So the green LED doesn't work at the moment. The, the power LED works, but the green um, to say that they were switched on standby top LED doesn't work. That's a standby, isn't it? To say that we're switched on doesn't work. But because I need the switch, um, I put a fan. This is a 12 volt brushless fan but it is it does because it's small it does make a bit of noise so I put a um, 100 ohm resistor in line with that just to slow that down a bit just so it's not as noisy but it's going to be beneficial to be there I'm sure from time to time so even though you know this isn't all put together just yet <clears throat> you can sort of get the general gist of what I'm doing um, this this box this unit once it's got its lid on it's going to look quite neat and compact. It's going to look something like that. And it's going to have this uh, shrouding over the wires between here and here. So there's going to be sort of like 10 inches of move flexibility between this unit and this unit. Which leaves it, you know, um, some choices for me to how to locate this. I can put this on top of this. I can have this, you know, at the back somewhere and have this so you can see it. And I did think I'd try and shove it over there somewhere, the power supply, and, um, the ATX box, and have the supply maybe maybe down here. 
but that's all for just trying to get it finished off but I just thought I'd show you this file because chances are you know I, I tried to make this video a few times and it kept messing up because this camera has been playing me up as a few you might have noticed over the last few videos I've had it play up on me um, I've done some experimenting with it and I'm trying to get it so it doesn't keep playing up uh, so it'd be quite interesting to see if this video works out but this is I think this is the seventh time trying to record this and I've missed bits out all along because when I was first putting this together I was recording it and finding out that it wasn't actually recording which is quite annoying um, so I'm actually at this stage now where I'm thinking well you know I'm going to be showing you the box finished very soon and just going ta-da I did it <laughs> so um, for the you know, the ATX supply I, I did all the, the regular stuff I, um, I stuck a dummy load in between the, um, the highest uh, amperage rails which are on this one is the 5 volt and negative so there is um, I could only get I, I, I used 322 uh, ohms because I didn't have any like 5 ohm or 10 ohm resistors I, but I got a few 22 ohms so I put three together which gives me about 7.3 7 ohms um, at 5 watts so that, that's plenty uh, there that should be okay I'm not going to use these 3.3's I'm not using the 12 volt negative I'm not using um, these 5 volts or a couple of these negatives or these 12 volts but I decided not to cut it all the way back um, because I may want to use them at some stage in the future for something so I'll tape those up and just isolate them away from each other and just leave them in in there they'll be fine and it will just be this nice tidy black shrouding coming out the back here and coming into the back here um, I'll let it come part way through here and then I'll put some nice big clamping cable ties on there uh, so they can't be pulled around but it gives me some flexibility yeah I'm just gonna I'm gonna power it up uh, for you whoops just so you can see it work I might have to just put it down a second just down there no. This is, of course, live, so I'd say to anybody, you know, playing around with this sort of stuff, be very, very careful. This will kill you. Um, or can kill you. Not necessarily that it will, but it can. Put your hands in that high voltage side. Uh, I have a view of the front of that, yeah, so I can just uh, switch this on. Okay. Sounds quiet enough, doesn't it? And that, that fan's great when there's it's, it gets quite noisy when there's a uh, when there's no uh, no resistor there, but it's okay when there is. So that's the only reason that says zero is because the um, it's because there's a load actually on it. It would say 0.3 if it wasn't. But I've got this uh, 12 volt bulb here just for demonstration, just to show that it's uh, it all works. I'm turn it to about three volts and just leave it to catch up with itself. Because look at this, like 2.2. And as that warms up, as that bulb's warming up the element, it's dropping down. Uh, the filament, I should say, the element. And there's, there's the bulb. I'll switch this light off and see. Turn this up. We can definitely, um, definitely pull some power through here. That's the sort of maximum, sort of four and a half. You just back that down because I know that the wires between here and here won't be too uh, won't be too keen on on that. So yeah, and it'll be even nicer when that green LED works. I'll, I'll be a lot happier when the green LED works. I'm gonna just isolate that away from the mains. So that's it, that's, that's all I've done so far, um, and I shall, uh, once I've got it all connected up and in, in place, and this bulb done and everything, and the switch on, I'll probably do another couple of minutes follow-up, but for now, uh, that's as far as I got with it. So anyway, cheers for watching guys if you got this far, and uh, yeah, I'll catch you on the next one.